Hey everyone, I'm Kyle and in this week's video I'm going to be teaching you how to calculate how many rotations you need to program your robot in order to make a certain turn or drive a certain distance. Today I'm going to be sharing with you something a little bit different. Instead of demonstrating an EV3 program or a cool mechanical concept, I'm going to be sharing with you a spreadsheet. This spreadsheet was created by one of my viewers and shared with me so I could share it with you guys. This is an awesome spreadsheet for competitions like FLL or WRO because you can input information about your robot and how far you want to go and it'll tell you how many rotations you need to program your robot to either drive a certain distance in a straight line or if you want to drive in a circle like drive a certain number of degrees in an arc it'll tell you how many rotations you need to do that so it'll save you a lot of time when you're navigating on the FLL or the WRO field because it crunches a lot of the numbers for you pretty cool right the program that I'm showcasing in this week's video was created by a viewer on my channel named Bendik Skarpness Bendik is from Norway and formerly a part of FLL team Gozen Bendix saw some of my videos and was inspired to create even cooler versions of my programs. And so big thanks to Bendix for providing these programs to me so I can share them with you today. Now I have the spreadsheet open and I can show you how to use it. In the top right here are your main inputs. So this is where you're going to type in the circumference of your robot's drive wheels in centimeters and also the distance between the two wheels in centimeters. This of course is the distance between the two drive wheels and this is the lateral difference. Uh, so left and right distance between the two wheels. And then it uses this information to calculate a whole bunch of other um, pieces of information that are more meaningful, more relevant to you as a programmer. So for example, if you want the robot to drive forward a certain number of centimeters, then it's going to tell you how many rotations you need to program your robot to go in order to get that many centimeters in terms of linear distance. So I can change this up, like let's say if I want to drive forward 15 centimeters, it tells me I need to drive for that many rotations to reach that distance. It also gives you the number of rotations that you need to drive to get the robot to drive in a circle. So this assumes that the inside wheel stays planted and the outside wheel is the one that drives. So it pivots along that inside wheel. And these are some sample angles that it automatically calculates for you. So for example, with this circumference wheel and this amount of distance, if you wanted the robot to drive a, in a 45 degree arc, you'd need to drive the outside wheel this many rotations while keeping the inside wheel stationary. And it also does the same thing for 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 360 degrees. Then down here, this is pretty much the same thing, except it lets you type in a custom angle value. So instead of those four that it gives you by default, you can type in anything you want. So let's say I wanted 150 degrees, and it shows me how many number of how many rotations the outside wheel needs to turn in order to make a 150 degree arc. And as you can see here, if you play around with these numbers, this will change a lot of the other calculations. So if you have if you have a taller wheel, so by default it's 22 centimeters, if instead let's say you had a wheel that was 30 centimeters tall, then everything else changes here um, because your robot covers more distance with one rotation. And then same if you want to change the distance between the wheels, like if you make this taller, then th uh, sorry, if you make this smaller, then it's going to change everything else relating to driving in an arc. So that's pretty much how the spreadsheet works. Now I'm going to show you how the spreadsheet works, and you can use this information to make a spreadsheet like this for yourself. So first we start with the inputs. So that's the circumference of the wheel and the distance between the wheels. So these are just numbers that you type in right here. And the circumference of the wheel is stored in J1, and the distance between the wheels is stored in J2. Now we move over to the first function, which is in these columns over here. These are pretty simple driving forward functions. So this is another input. You type in the distance in centimeters that you want your robot to drive. And that's B2. And then to calculate the number of rotations necessary, if we click on this here, we can see that this function is just 
J1 divided by B2. So what that means is we're taking the circumference of the wheel and dividing it by the distance in centimeters that we selected over here. So that's pretty straightforward and that's just uh, basic Excel programming where you're telling Excel to take whatever the value in J1 is and divide it by the value in B2. So you can definitely think of them as variables because that's exactly what they are. Now we move on to the rotations in a circle function which is a little bit more sophisticated than a drive forward function but it still uses some pretty simple geometry so it shouldn't be too hard to understand. We'll start here, which is where it calculates the 360 degree turn. If you double click here, we'll see this function. And so what this does is it takes pi, which is 3.1415, multiplies by 2, and then multiplies by the value in J2, which is the distance between the wheels. So again, that's 2 times pi times the distance between the wheels, and then finally divides by the circumference of the wheel to compensate for distance. And that's how it calculates a 360 degree turn. Then a 180 degree turn would be half of that, so that's F6 divided by 2. And a 90 degree turn would be half of that, so that's F5 divided by 2. And then 45 would be half of that too, so that would be F4 divided by 2. And then there's also the custom function down here where you can program any number of degrees. So this is another input. You type the number of degrees, and this is in cell F8. And then to calculate that custom number, it's very similar to the way we calculated with 360 degrees. So it goes 2 times pi times the distance between the wheels divided by the circumference of the wheel. And then this last term where it divides by 360 and multiplies by F8, that's just scaling it to the specific number of degrees that you programmed in here. Let's put all of this into context with a real world example. And I'll type in the measurements for my robot Sirius so I can try it out. So first I measured the distance between the wheels and that was 13.5 centimeters. Now this is the distance between the middle of the wheels because the wheels on my robot Sirius are those tall motorcycle wheels that are a little bit ballooned. And then for the circumference of the wheel, I actually found that it's easier to find the diameter and then convert it to circumference. So I'll pull out my calculator here. So the diameter of my wheel I measured it to be 9.3 centimeters and then you multiply by 3.14 which is pi and that will give you the circumference of the wheel in centimeters which is 29.2 so then I can go ahead and type that in and then now that we have all of Sirius's measurements input we could see all of the information that we need in order to get Sirius to do uh, whatever we want really so over here let's say I want Sirius to drive 30 centimeters I need to program it to uh, run its drive motors forward for 0 0.97 rotations and that'll give me 30 centimeters. Then if we go over to rotations in a circle if I want the robot to drive in a 45 degree turn I program 0.36 rotations 90 degrees is 0.726 rotations 180 degrees is 1.45 rotations 360 degrees is 2.90 Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm PV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.